back to Daredevil Motorsports channel. We have got uh, the fender that we're going to be working on today, the hood we're going to be working on today, and those four pieces that I told you we were going to do a tutorial on, on what we do for the carbon fiber pieces that we've done so far. Uh, we're going to do those a little bit later in the video, so stick around for that. But first thing, we've got one more layer that we needed to get on uh, this driver's side front fender. So we just sanded it down. Uh, next thing we'll do is we'll wipe it down, get it clean, spray our adhesive uh, Super 77 on it, put the last layer down, then we're going to go ahead and uh, epoxy this one. Um, but before we do that, we do have the inner structure of the hood done. And obviously now we have the outer structure of the hood done. So we are going to be trimming up both of these and making those one piece as well here in just a little bit. So yeah, stick around. We're going to work on this fender first. All right guys, so we didn't quite get a uh, too much video, or any video that matter, of us putting the two pieces together. That's because both of us that were here had to be actually doing the uh, portion of it. So we've got the initial um, structure that we have uh, made from the inner hood bonded to the outer piece. And then once this is dry, we will then go ahead and just make another little piece of an X of our own and that will hold the hood nice and solid. Then we will uh, finish cutting the holes that we need to cut for the hood pins, and uh, this part will be done. It is uh, looking pretty good. It's you know kind of got a couple different uh, stacks of tires and stuff that we've got there to hold it in the shape. Uh, obviously, since both of them are pretty flexible, to hold them in the right shape. That way, when it dries, it will all be nice and solid and in the right shape. Next up, we're going to go ahead and put the. Uh, Final layer of epoxy, or the final layer of epoxy for the carbon fiber third layer onto the uh, fender. And we'll pull the pieces off the front so we can go ahead and do our little tutorial piece for this video. See you in a second. All right guys, so it has been a day. The inner structure and outer structure are bonded together on the hood. It actually isn't as floppy as I thought it was going to be. This is me shaking it around and it's not too bad. But we are still going to add the inner structure just for that little bit of added strength. Um, since if you do push in the middle of the hood, it can move around. We don't really want that buffeting effect uh, with air pushing down and the uh, air underneath the hood kind of moving it up and down. We don't really want that. So we're going to add the structure back in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take just like we do with the doors, a little bit of our foam. I'm going to go from this corner over here, right to about this spot here where there was structural before. Same thing over here, over in that corner, I'm just gonna try to stay a little bit away from the exhaust portion over there. So, we're gonna get that set up next, get the carbon uh, sprayed down, or laid down into the areas that it uh, will be. We'll spray tack it down, and then uh, yeah, we'll be ready to put resin on this. And we'll be on to the next step. Alright guys, so we've got the four pieces off the uh, front of the car that we're going to do the little tutorial on. Now these were the only pieces that weren't off the front uh, when we weighed everything. So before we actually do anything with these, we want to make sure we get them weighed. So these are the four pieces and the two blinkers. So I've got our scales zeroed out here. We're just going to put everything on. Make sure we're not touching. It's a little hard to see. Let me see if I can get it there for you. 6.3 pounds. So, decent little chunk of weight for actually what those little bitty uh, pieces are. So, I bet we'll have maybe a pound or two back when we uh, do three layers for all these pieces. These lights, uh, we're actually going to do something a little bit different with these. We're still going to have blinkers. We do drive the car on the street a decent amount still. Uh, so, we're still going to use a blinker, but we're going to use a little bit different setup. So, 6.3 pounds. Next setup for this is we're going to show you every step that we do to make one of the pieces that we've done. So, yeah, follow along. Alright guys, so we are to the point of the video where I'm going to start showing you a tutorial step by step of what we're doing. So the first thing we do is we just start by cleaning the surface. Now we've already done this a little bit. We're going to go ahead and go through and just put a good clean acetone rag on it to clean up all the areas and make it nice 
clean before we put on our PVA. So the next step after this, we want to prep the surface and make sure that the epoxy doesn't stick to it. Alright, so that looks pretty decent. I'm going to give this a second to dry out here while I grab the PVA. So we'll be back in one second. Alright guys, so the next step is we're going to take our PVA, which is really just a mold release. And what the mold release does is it creates a barrier between the part and the epoxy and carbon fiber that we put down. That way, once the epoxy hardens, it doesn't actually stay stuck to the part. The mold release allows us to get underneath it and peel it off um, and then take it off of our part, obviously, so we've got the uh, just a piece of carbon fiber at the end. So we're going to go ahead and spray this on. And really all you do is you spray it on. We use a credit card to help move it around. And then I will take uh, just a little rag and help move the rest of it around and then get any big pooling spots out of the way. You gotta get in there and move your finger around to get into some of the spots. Go ahead and do so. That does make it easier. PVA wipes right off your hand, no problem. It's not like it's gonna be bad for you or hurt you or anything like that. I'm sure it's not very great for you if you let it sit forever, but I have put it on my hands an absolute ton of times. So far, no adverse effects, but. If you notice right over here, I have covered up that hole where the turn signal was with just some masking tape. So there's some clear masking tape and what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to fill up that gap and masking tape is, is kind of its own um, release agent epoxy doesn't stick to it it just falls off after it's completely done so this get the back tab through quick When you're doing this, we use for parts that we really want to let go of something, we use two good layers of this PVA. So we'll put this on, be done here with it in a second, and then we'll let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, let it haze up a little bit, and we'll come back and put another one on. So we'll see you here in just a few minutes when we put the next one on. All right, guys, so we're back. It's been a little bit, and we're going to get the second layer of PVA put on our piece here. Spread it around. Ready to let this dry out. And once it dries, we'll go ahead and start putting our carbon fiber down on it. So, we're going to let that dry out for a few minutes, we'll be back. Alright guys, so, PVA is now dried, we got two layers on it. As you can tell, it's a little bit hazy if you get down there really close and look at it. So, our next step, for these that have a lot of shape to them, uh, like this one does, it's a little bit harder to just lay the carbon fiber and put epoxy on it and get it to stay in the right shape. So what we do for that is, we'll take our 3M Super 77, just a little spray adhesive, and uh, we'll just spray it on the piece, and then lay the carbon fiber flat on it, and kind of put it into the shape we want it to be at, before we actually put the epoxy on it. And then we put the layers of epoxy on it, we'll put it on nice and thick, so that way it just soaks through. So, let me go ahead and I'll quit chatting. We're gonna go ahead and go 
real quick through this for the most of it. It's real simple. Spray the, or simple. This is one of the harder parts um, to get it into the right shape, but it's a simple process. Spray the Super 77 on, lay it out, get it to contour to all the shapes, and we are gonna go around the back to get the tabs that we need to have too. So we gotta make sure that we do that as well. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get to it. We're gonna run through this part uh, real quick, and then I'll uh, show you what it looks like when we're all done up for the first layer. Okay, so, as you can tell, layer number one is on and looking pretty good. We use a carbon fiber for our few base layers uh, that we're gonna use for this. It's called four harness, so it molds and shapes around the corners a lot better some, than some thicker, tighter weaves would. Um, so as you can tell, it moves and works its way around quite well, whereas in its got all the shapes in the background. So the next thing I'm going to do, uh, that I do every time now before I do anything uh, else with this is, I'm gonna take our scissors and just trim around the edge, leave maybe a quarter of an inch around. That way it's got a little bit of extra to make sure your, your part is completely coated, but uh, we'll trim up around into the shape. And make sure we don't have too much excess. Now, what I like to use for carbon fiber is just a good set of trauma shears. Trauma shears are super sharp and they cut just, just about anything. But you have to be careful because they will cut your skin very easily. They are super, super sharp. So, be careful if you use those. Now, that we've got some of this trimmed off, you will see that the last part we're gonna do <clears throat> Excuse me. Now that we've got some of this excess, we've got these two tabs here. Now that we've got a pretty fat, flat layup that we can do, we'll go ahead and hold that part around. And there we are. And the reason I've done it this way is that way as you can tell it kind of bunches up a little bit well it eliminates a lot of bunch up and now once we get to that spot we can just go ahead keep on trimming and so we have done this part for every part that you've seen so far as make all the fenders have been this way um, the hood was this way the trunk was done this way and it just makes it nice and tidy to work with especially so you don't have a huge amount of just excess epoxy that you're using for this pieces and then you kind of have a good way to tell where the line is when you are at the end and getting ready to trim the piece up. It gives you just a little bit better piece to work with to know how much you've got to trim off, where you've got to trim it off of. And any of this that's had a type of glue on it already is pretty much just toss away, especially if it's small pieces like this. 
If it's a real large piece, I, I try to keep it sometimes just to maybe be able to use it later on. But for the most part, it is going to be something to just toss away. Maybe throw in a little scrap pile in case you want to try something on something else. You don't have uh, the want to really destroy a big piece of good carbon fiber. So, we are getting around to the last parts here. I'm getting close. Just this one little part left. So, layer one of carbon fiber is done, and as you can tell, everything went pretty smooth. There was a little bit of deformed weave just right over here where it bunched up a little bit, but you won't really see that too much once we put down the second layer. So, next thing we've got to do, and you've got multiple options from here on out. We're going to do it one way, but there are multiple ways you can do this. So, you can go right ahead and jump to putting the epoxy on this and then wait for the epoxy to dry, scuff it up and put your second coat on, or like we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and put our second layer on, same exact way we just put the first layer on, Super 77, just over this, shape it around, trim it up, um, and then we're gonna put it on good and thick so it soaks through to both layers. So you can do it that way, or you can go ahead and let it dry. Or do the first layer, let it dry, and then do another layer. So I suggest if it's a super, super, um, especially shape that you wanna have really right, you don't uh, do more than two layers before you put the epoxy on. Uh, three layers, I've tried it before, and it really doesn't have the chance to get super soaked down into that third layer. You can come out with some pretty dry stuff on the bottom. You don't really want that. So we're going to go ahead and get the second layer put on this, and we'll go ahead to the next spot. So it's just as simple as going boom, and it's as easy as that. Second layer is on, and uh, yeah, next step we're going to do, we're going to mix up some epoxy, and uh, we will go ahead and put a nice thick coat all around it. So we'll sort of start with this backside here. That way we can get this part kind of done up. We'll set it on to our area that we're going to set it on here. We'll put the rest on. So we'll do that in just a second. All right, guys. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take our epoxy. And now I think we'll do a different video on this a little bit later about the different types of epoxies, how you mix them, what you do with them. This tutorial is just step by step of what we do when we're actually covering the piece and doing it. So. We've got our epoxy here, we're gonna take our brush, and what we're gonna do is, we've got two layers of on here, so we're just gonna go ahead and, and put it on pretty thick. That way it can just soak down, do everything. So you're just gonna put it on and brush it in. Now some of these brushes are better than others. We use just, you know, brushes that aren't super expensive. So you gotta be careful Sometimes a brush will try to leave a bristle behind in the actual epoxy and any of that. It doesn't show up a super huge amount right now, but when everything is all dried out and you've got a big, you know, manila, yellowish, whatever color you want to call it, bristles sticking out in the uh, carbon fiber, you can definitely see it at that point. So. Keep an eye out for them and really just try to grab everything out of there. But I'm going to uh, stop talking because I'm sure we will fast forward to the majority of this part.
Hey guys, so we have coated everything. And now you see there are little bubbles starting. And so what we will do is just keep an eye on it for the next little bit. We'll go through. We will grab our torch and we'll just kind of heat up the surface a little bit. And so what that does just pops the bubbles. Puts it through uh, that little thing up there. Puts it through the rest of the surface and just allows the uh, um, epoxy to settle out a little bit. So we're going to go ahead do the same thing on the rest of the pieces that we got, and then uh, we'll be back with this piece when we are wrapped up and it's all dried up. All right, guys. So it has been. Probably two and a half days now since we have uh, done it up and it is all dried up and ready to be popped off. So what we've got to do now is actually get it off the piece and then if you'll notice on the back side you'll be able to see all the little holes where the uh, areas need to be drilled. That will definitely be right in the uh, piece on the back side and then all you've got to do is trim it up, make it fit uh, the piece that it should and you're good to go. So. I'm going to uh, just go ahead and get things popped off here and I'm sure we are going to fast forward through this part since it can take a little while at times. Sometimes it pops off real quick, other times it takes you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, with the fenders that we do, that took about an hour to get each one of the, or to get that one off. I got another one getting ready to come off, but anyways, watch it, enjoy. All right, and there we are guys. It is off. <laughs> Not that this weighed much at all. But this weighs, gosh, almost nothing I would imagine. So, the part that I like about the way we do it the most is now, you can see where I've got to cut the hole out for the intercooler tube right there. Um, and then, you will look and see like bolt hole right there. There's another bolt hole over here. There's gonna be a bolt hole on the back side of, of these two over here as well. That kind of just gives you a reference of where you need to cut. And so, yeah. Last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go grab my scale and then we will just uh, give the parts a little quick uh, way and to see how much difference there is in just this one little bitty piece. So, give me one second, we're back. So, we've got our scale set up. We've got to bust out the uh, small one since this weighs almost nothing. Uh, so, We've got it set up, zeroed out. Let's see what the weight of the old part is here. And we're not touching anything. One pound, 4.6 ounces. So, that means this has got to weigh just a few ounces. And then the new part. 5.1 ounces. So we lost just under a pound. So, that is the added benefit of all the carbon parts. They are definitely lightweight and uh, easy way to lose a pound. Just off this one simple part, which is maybe 18 inches long, and I would say 10 or 11 inches wide. So, yeah, make yourself some carbon fiber parts and uh, enjoy the benefits of lightweight and looking cool and having made your own stuff.